Good morning, it is 6 o'clock, I'm Andrew Hanson. And I'm Natalie Sprassi. Before we get to the news, let's check in with Joe. You know, earlier this week we walked outside, it was snowing. Today we walk outside and it's raining. Yeah, so this we'll is, take this the rain. Is, this is more like it's supposed to mm -hmm. be the, the proverbial spring flowers that lead to the May flowers. And of course, Reaction continues from both sides of the political aisle this morning after Governor Pat Quinn delivered his annual budget address yesterday. The conversation happening right now, Quinn asking lawmakers to extend the temporary income tax hike. The governor warned lawmakers allowing the tax hike to expire will cause deep cuts to critical services, and that means jobs lost. Quinn estimating that some 13,000 teachers across the state will be pink slipped. Quinn also wants to offer all homeowners a $500 annual property tax refund, and he's pushing to double the value of the earned income tax credit. Support was split along party lines. I'm glad that the governor highlighted for everyone. The We've gotten much value for it. Bruce Rauner, the Republican nominee for governor, weighing in, releasing a statement about the speech. In it, it says in part, Pat Quinn first promised the working people of Illinois he wouldn't raise taxes by 67 percent. He broke that promise, taking away nearly a week's worth of pay for Illinois families. Then he promised his tax hike would be temporary. He broke that promise, too, and is doubling down on his failed policies. Springfield Mayor Mike Houston in mind yet. Legislation to lessen penalties for having small amounts of marijuana is making progress at the State House right now. A bill to lower the penalties for possessing 30 grams or less of marijuana cleared a committee vote. If passed by the General Assembly, someone caught with less than 30 grams would be given a citation rather than arrested and charged with a misdemeanor as the law is now. What this would do is create more Class A misdemeanors and pet corrections inmates. According to the sponsor, the bill would save the state $17 million in probationary costs and potentially create more revenue from ticketing offenders. In other news this morning, the infrastructure they need. To education news out of Decatur now. It was her first full day on the job and already she's already facing criticism at this hour. Two Decatur school board members spoke out against newly appointed superintendent Lisa Taylor because of what they say is inexperience. But Taylor says she has the right credentials for the job, including experience as an assistant high school principal and deputy superintendent. She's now ready to face the biggest issue, plaguing districts across the state. That's the biggest, most challenging piece, I, and we have to be creative. Taylor was picked as superintendent after a months-long search, and she was the only internal candidate in the top six. Taylor wants to work that to her advantage because she already knows staff, parents, students, and the community. She signed a contract for $175,000 a year plus benefits. New on Sunrise. Natalie, Andrew. Thanks so much for that report, Alicia. What better to help out than a small child? Appreciate that story. Well, the day is getting off to a soggy start out there. Joe will let us know the potential for storms later today and when they could strike. And also ahead on Sunrise, 100 years old and still going strong. The secret one woman has to staying young. Look at her go. All right, Joe, thanks. New on Sunrise, a 100-year-old woman in Wisconsin has a secret to staying young. Sarah Seinberg walks the halls of her retirement community every day, racking up four miles a day. Heather Berrien talked to her. Sarah Stenberg has an... Well, for heaven's sake, yes. Yeah. Four miles a day. That's a lot of walking. A hundred years old, four miles a day. How incredible she looks is great. that? She sounds great. That's talk, incredible. Talk about her inspiration. I did some research. A hundred years ago, mm -hmm. back in 1914, the average home price $6,100. Wow. I wonder if she remembers that. And then the average car cost was $550. Then, of course, within that 100 years and all that walking, uh -huh. she still. <laughs> did not experience the Chicago Cubs World Series championship. And that is a Cubs fan admitting that right I there. I know. It's so sad to I think, know. you know. That's how we have the Blackhawks. Well, hey, we're it's not our, your typical our, sporting experience. We're in our second Speaking of sports. 100 year, maybe the second Maybe this will be the century it happens. Is, yeah. Not holding my breath, though. <laughs> We've been rebuilding for, for mm -hmm. over 100 years. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, when we come back, a live interview. We're going to have details on this weekend's Armored Combat League bouts at the State Fairgrounds.